Hey everyone, I'm doing my first video in my living room, my new living room, because we moved. I have this nice background behind us that my mother-in-law did when we were traveling, which very grateful. I got Milo over here and then Daisy over here in the new bed. I'll, I'll show the dogs afterwards because I know a lot of people like to see the dogs. I want to talk about an important topic that someone commented on one of our videos talking about why logic will not work for OCD and where we, where we go wrong when it comes to logic. Uh, how it's very easy to think that we can logic our way out of OCD, but when push comes to shove, all it does is usually become outward and self-reassurance mechanisms that keep us stuck. Although it's extremely understandable why people fall into this trap. Before I go any further, please subscribe, hit that like button down below. Always remember, fill at ocdrecovery.com. We get back to you in an extremely timely fashion. One of the biggest principles that we hold at OCD Recovery is very quick and immediate response times. We can't respond all the time, but we, I can't think there's many people that won't get you booked in as quickly as we can, right? All time zones all over the world. That's why we have the team. We're all in different areas of the world, so we can work all over Asia, uh, the Middle East, all here in America, Canada, er I mean, everywhere, all the islands. Not many places, corner of the world I have not worked with. And I'm very grateful for that, for that experience. It's, it's, it's made me open my eyes to many things I took for granted. So thank you to all the people that work around the world that I work with. So the world is constantly reassuring one, one another on many different things. So let's take an example of a six-year-old child that comes, and I don't have kids, so I can't relate to you on this, but I would imagine this is how it goes. Maybe a kid comes to you and says, am I going to be okay, mommy? And they're in their bed. And you say, everything's going to be okay. The world's going to be okay. That's actually not true. Now, how do you weigh the pros cons list with the benefits of lying? Like I talk about, there are pros and cons to lying. That's one of those things. Do you tell a six-year-old kid, let's say his, his name is John, it's okay, John. One in four people die of this thing called cardiovascular disease and the other, one, you know, one of the three, they die of cancer. And then, oh, what's cancer? It's when your body has this thing inside you and it kills you, Raw oh, pain. Like they, they'll freak out, right? But maybe that would be a better way to do it in a more compassionate way. And we wouldn't have so much disillusionment when, when we get over, I think that's that's the correct word, right? Disillusionment, that's a word, right? It's a word, I made it up. If not, it's now a word. Um, it's something along those lines. <laughs> anyway, so we would have more, we would have probably a better outcome if we did things along those lines. But we don't, we reassure people their whole entire life. We tell people they can have things they can't achieve. So I'll, I'll give you an example, right? Let's go another one, okay? And this all goes into self-reassurance. You're gonna see where I'm going with this. I never worked a day in my life. I always use a Stephen Wynn interview from the BBC, I think it was 2014, where he's smiling and says, I never worked a day in my life. That is the biggest load of horseshit I've ever heard. He had to do paperwork, logistics, the mafia at the time. It, it, there were so many things he had to deal with. He worked and he worked a lot and he worked long, long hours. You forget that probably when you're older, worth four or six billion dollars, but you still work. So this idea that kids have nowadays, I want a job, I never work a day in my life. And then they, they self-reassure and they, they go down this rabbit hole of like, I can have everything I want. No, you can't. Most people don't make a lot of money. Most people struggle with different things in their life, behavioral patterns. Most people have very poor discipline. Most people give way to instant gratification more so than not. Most people have a hard time not getting speeding tickets. A lot of people get arrested for different offenses such as DUI or drug offenses. Some people go through uh, violence cases, physical altercations and bars when they're drunk. It's the world is not what you think. And then when you live in certain areas, like where I live in America, you could be so, very, very blind to what happens in other areas on earth. I'm reading a very good book right now on mafia women in Italy talking about that honor killings were actually still almost legal up until 1990. That's 34 years ago. That's nothing. I mean, this is, this is crazy. I was reading that. I'm thinking this is nuts. Um, and what these women, these men that murders, these women, these mafia bosses, women were responsible for some themselves, but just giving the orders, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of murders in the 70s and 80s and 90s. So it's, it's wild to think about. So we live in this world of the world's going to listen to me. It's going to be exactly how I want it to be. And if not, you're the problem. Opposite of stoicism, opposite of any Greco-Roman philosophy and opposite of unconditional self-life, other acceptance. The world doesn't owe me anything or you anything, no matter how much work you put in. So think about, let's say two brothers, Jimmy and John, okay? They start a business. They start a car manufacturing business. They do everything they're supposed to do. They do it the right way. They don't cut corners. Then the market crashes and they lose their entire business. So 
Just saying that this is the way the world's gonna be, even when I put the correct work in, is also not accurate. So, so let's go into some OCD examples, okay? Let's use basic ones, false memory and real event. Well, I've never done that before, so that's that's just a silly thought. That ain't gonna work. If you have a real event, fa a real event false memory, POCD, harm OCD, abuse, violence, the only thing that gets you out of that cycle is of course changing all the behaviors, getting comfortable with the automatic rumination. You cannot just stop rumination. All the videos out there where people tell you, just stop rumination, don't ruminate, don't do that. Agree with the thoughts that they come in. I just watched a big video on this. Just say, oh, welcome, you're back in. You're, you're a silly thought. That's just not gonna work. These individuals have never experienced the chronic latching mechanism of OCD if you think that that would work. And we all know that doesn't work, right? Again, understandable. Can't really explain it to anyone. It's, all that matters is for us. Because um, it can be very frustrating for people when they're like, well, they're telling me this and you're telling me that. Yeah, but the reality is you and I both know that doesn't work. Because if it did work, you wouldn't be here watching our videos, right? That's just the reality of life. And I'm very fortunate to have had OCD. I love the fact I had OCD, severe OCD. I like the fact I went to the mental hospital. I didn't like it at the time, but I love the experience what it's done for my life. It's done so many things for my life way outside the boundary. So when you're going down that route of like agreeing with the thoughts as they come in, that's not gonna work. And you're not gonna be able to get your way out of it. I tell people just go for the worst case scenario as if it happened. What would that look like for you? Yes, let's say you lost control and you hurt a family member. Let's think about this for a second. Could you accept yourself? Of course you could. There are people in prison that do all sorts of crazy things that have accepted themselves. They don't like what they did. They think about their their acts. They, they, and some of these acts are, are atrocious acts. I mean, we, then think about something as simple as going to a war zone and killing someone. But if you kill someone in a family dispute, in the family dispute, you're now an evil psychopath, but in the war zone, you're a hero. Ellis talks about this. There's some serious flaws in the way our society views people that harm people. This is not whether I'm agreeing, I'm trying to get you to see something from a different perspective. My entire job in this is to get you to see things from a different way, because I had to see things from a different way myself. So that's one thing. Let's go to health OCD. That's a big one as well. Why won't logic work with OCD? So let's say you're 34 years old, you've never had intercourse in your life, you're a female, and you're convinced you're pregnant. Okay, every person you know is gonna tell you that you're crazy, okay, you know that. You're not gonna be able, you, you can't get pregnant, you, you've never had intercourse. If you, you and that, let's say you've had this fear for three years. So now, pregnancies don't last three years. You've never had intercourse, you're a virgin. What are you talking about? And then you're like, come on, this makes no sense. Not gonna work. You have to accept the possibility that you missed something. Maybe you were out, you had sex when you were drunk, and maybe you are pregnant. These are, there's no other way to get underneath this. I know how hard this is. Um, let's say, take an abdominal aortic aneurysm, okay? Bursting of one of the major arteries in the body. It's, it's very similar to a Widowmaker heart attack. You die basically instantly before you even hit the ground, depending, depending how big the break is in, in, in the aneurysm, right? You are dead before you hit the ground. So um, here comes Daisy over here. She's gonna sit down while I pet her. Oh, now I'm in an awkward position. I'm stretched like this. There we go, okay. Let's say you're 22 years old and you have really bad health OCD and you're looking at the statistics online, which you should not be doing. You're compulsively going to your doctor, which you should not be doing. And you go, and they tell you, look, you're 19 years old, you're 18 years old, you're very healthy. The chance of this happening are slim. Until you accept the possibility that it can happen to you, it's not gonna go anywhere. And as always, by default, this isn't a behavior compulsion avoidance video, but all that stuff is going as well. We're talking about the belief aspect and why logic won't work. So that's one of the things for sure with health OCD. Let's take sensory motor OCD, why logic won't work. Well, everyone breathes, Erica breathes, my dogs breathe, Daisy breathes, Milo breathes, everyone breathes. They're not panicked or upset about it. That ain't gonna work. Self-reassurance, you're not gonna be able to logic your way out. Remember, OCD recovery is about the ultimate acceptance of unconditional self-like other acceptance of worst case scenarios. I hear people say this all the time online. Don't worry about the worst case scenario. You don't have to do that. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You have to accept the worst case scenario. No matter how much you hate it, no matter how much you don't like it, you're gonna have to start somewhere because you and I both know you're on this video watching this logic video knowing that there's no other way to get better. I wish there was a way. Some milder cases, absolutely. Chronic OCD, no chance whatsoever. Unconditional self-life other acceptance that maybe I have DPTR for the rest of my life. Maybe I'm fat, maybe I'm ugly, maybe women reject me, maybe Erica leaves me, maybe I don't make any more money, maybe I go back in money. 
These are all things I've had to touch on. Maybe I don't get my anger under control and I harm myself and go to jail or harm, harm myself, not physically, but like harm my life by fighting someone, knocking them out, they hit their head and die. I mean, this happened to one of those, an actor not that long ago. He got five years for manslaughter. I'm pretty sure he was a, an actor from Mexico. Got in a road rage incident. That could have happened to me many times. I could have gotten shot many times. I've gotten out of the car and screamed to people in gun-friendly states. I mean, this is the reality of it. If I do accept the fact I can notice my saliva, breathe, breathing, swallowing for the rest of my life, I have to accept the fact that I'm not going to have the physique I want because I don't care about that as much, which may be sad. All sorts of different things that I had to accept. All part of worst case scenarios. And remembering acceptance doesn't mean agreement. That's so important. So the real event in false memory harm, harm and POCDs, unconditional acceptance is your only answer. Long term for 99.9% .9 of people. And really remembering acceptance doesn't mean agreement. There's much more to it than what I'm saying. I'm just talking about a basic general overview on why the logic won't work, why you won't be able to do that. I've never done that. I've never seen someone in that light. I've never been attracted to that sex or that age range. It's never been me. It's not me. Not going to work. Not going to work. Not going to work. It's going to come after you. It's going to come after you over and over and over and over and over and over and over again until it gets underneath that and just makes you panic and freak out and be depressed. I know I've been there. Suicidal, didn't want to live anymore, thought every day about shooting myself, hanging myself, driving myself. Um, and it was a very, very, very tough place to be. But but I'm happy I, I went through it. I'm happy I continue to work on it. Are there any other, any other logic examples I wanted to give? And by the way, everyone's going to be giving you logic. Totally. Understandably so. They're going to be giving you logic. They're going to be telling you the things you want to hear. They're going to reassure you. That's what family is for. They're there to reassure you and tell you you're going to be okay because they love you. Doctors, that's their job as well. It's part of the career field. But we can't take that on board. You can't stop people from giving you reassurance, but you can get yourself to a place where you're better at accepting it. So thank you guys for watching this video. This is a very important thing. Logic, I'm telling you, I've never done this before. This doesn't make sense. I've never been like this. I've never had this problem. All those statements have to go. They all got to go. And you just got to look at what you have now, what your beliefs and behaviors are. And remember, Phil at OCDRecovery.com. Hope to hear from you soon. Always a pleasure. Webinars, Tuesday, 8.30 p.m. UK time. Those are always a blast. We have some good ones coming up. Um, like I said, when you message Phil, you can ask him questions. You know, how are the groups? Um, what's co coaching like? How do I come in for a six-pack or a 10-pack or a single session? Can I do a single session? Can I come to just a webinar? So thank you again, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day.